been a minute. There's been a lot going on. Uh, obviously, family stuff comes before my car stuff. So, I can only do what I can do. That being said, the vast majority of the things that were keeping me from getting to the garage are more or less over now. Unfortunately, uh, I did have a ton of YouTube videos to post here. Um, two memory cards and my camera decided to go to a, a new owner involuntarily uh, from the passenger seat of my van. Uh, so I don't have video coverage of the Chevet meet either, unfortunately. Um, with that being said, some of the members of Chevet owners have actually compiled some things. Uh, and there's a few, there's a few things up on YouTube right now that, uh, I will try to link to in the, uh, comment section here. So you guys can see what the meat was about. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can go to Chevet owners on Facebook and there's a ton of photos and videos that got dumped from the members. Now, Another thing you guys might notice, I haven't been wearing my teeth. Well, that's been for those that wanted to know, because I've had a large group of you uh, help me out getting these. Uh, they were great. They're fitting great. I love them. Uh, still very happy that I have them. Unfortunately, I uh, have not had them in regularly for the last month because I have to have a soft plate installed uh, to take up some gaps that have come up. In the midst of me doing that or getting ready to do that today, I've gotten these out and my dog got a hold of them because my son decided it would be funny to uh, put them in his mouth. <laughs> Uh, we lost track of where they got sat, and then the dog decided she wanted to also try them in her mouth. So, there's probably going to be a few videos of me without these for a little while. That's why. I gotta go get those taken care of. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have insurance on them, so. Without further ado, we're gonna get to the car stuff. Because... Man, I've been busy. Uh, I have gotten quite a bit done. You guys have not seen. because I've obviously been on hiatus with the camera. Uh, let me get the camera turned around here real quick. Now, obviously, the uh, 4.9 car is in here. As well as Scooter. And Scooter is on the new wheels and tires. Yesterday, I was planning on setting ride height. But I'm going to do that today. I have a kiddo that's been sick the last couple days. So I opened my mouth and I said, I was going to do things yesterday. And then the universe went, no, you're not. <laughs> As always. However, this thing is nearing completion. It is setting ride height. It is build the drive shaft. It's build the exhaust. This thing is ready to fire up and run. Uh... That carburetor right there and the other one I have that's on the engine need to switch some parts but otherwise that's ready to go I have the cluster with the tack in it ready to go I have the shifter base not this one I have another shifter base ready to accept the new shifter uh, so this one, this one's almost done. So close. Uh, we missed my deadline I wanted for it. But deadlines, deadlines can't always be met. And as you know, I'm a little more cramped in here because I now have three cars in here. Because I have had an angry neighbor that does not like my stuff complain even though I was covering that up and it was legally tagged in the driveway. So now it came inside and it's now full of stuff. So I'm working around that. I also have Tech Rod outside, nearing completion. I have some new stuff on Tech Rod I'll show you here in just a little bit. But while we're standing here, 
I have some Cheddar Express updates. We have a race engine. I know this doesn't look like a race engine. It looks like a pile of engine parts and not very clean ones. However, looks can be deceiving. This is a brand new, never used crank that I'm gonna take and get polished and then get the rod journals turned down to the Honda rod size because we have Honda rods now and forged pistons now. These shiny little devils. <sighs> oh yeah. I love shiny new parts. Even if it's not new parts, these are used parts, but they're good used parts. This is gonna let us turn some RPM and let us put the absolute screws to this engine. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming up on that. And for those of you also following around with or following the race car, you're gonna notice that these look an awful lot like the ones that are on the car, but in a different lug pattern. And that's because we are absolutely going to five lug for big brakes and a little bit of different suspension stuff this year. Because uh, we are nearing the limits of the stock suspension and we need a 15 inch wheel to clear what we're about to do. So those are new 15 by sevens for the race car and we're looking for some 15 by eights for the rear. Let me get the door open here. Since I have to go around absolutely everything with the door closed, so I have no room. This is the only way. So working here right now, I have to open a door, roll this car and that car back so I can have room to work like up in here. My car. My car is virtually ready to be back on the road. I have the new, new carburetor is on it and it works flawlessly. Uh, I have some exhaust to finish up on it. Tech rod is nearing completion. It's a floorboard and some plumbing away from being done on the power steering. Uh, it is a factory power steering rack, factory power steering lines custom bent to route around his exhaust over here because it's really tight. Uh, I don't have the key on here. I opened the hood right now. But you'll get to see it here later in the video. Uh, it's the Volvo Ford electric power steering that you guys have been seeing a lot of people putting on stuff recently. It fits really nice in the charcoal canister corner. And if you need to keep your charcoal canister, you can always relocate that. That's actually easier to relocate because it's smaller and it's got a few other places it can go. So if you needed to stay emissions compliant, but still wanted to run an electric power steering pump, it's doable and there is room there. So uh, the factory power steering lines actually almost reach it where, it's where it needs to locate. And you really only are going to make two small adapter lines. Uh, one obviously is return, so it can just be a piece of metal line with some uh, flare at the end of it. So you have something to put some hose clamps on between the two return lines. And the other one just needs to be a hard line with tube nuts. Because it's got pressure to deal with. But I will, uh, I will get the key here in a bit, and uh, I'll go over that. Now, while I'm in here grabbing the keys, I have something else. Uh, that I intended to show outside of just the page, uh, or the Chevette owner's page, rather. So here's a little clip of some floorboard stuff that I have coming up. Uh, like I said, still in the works. Don't want to give up on that particular project yet. All right, folks. I picked up something cool. NOS floor plans. Driver and the passenger side. So now, we don't have to donate a car to get at least the front pans done, and nobody else is gonna have to give up their NOS pans because that's what we bought these for. Uh, Michael Keeney got a real good deal on these and just happened to happen upon them um, on a Facebook Marketplace ad, and they are in great shape. They've been stored for years. And obviously some of the galvanization has uh, gotten shocky, but they are. 
are otherwise perfect. And so other than a little bit of discoloration and some storage marks, uh, we have exact floor copies now that can be used as templates for new stuff. And there are some things in the works in the background for with not only myself and a couple other members, but also some other members that are in the process of uh, trying their hand at some uh, floor pans at the moment that I found out about recently. They're not in a hurry to get them done, so don't expect any information on those anytime soon, but the process to make them is being tested as we speak. Uh, and Austin, over at Lucor Automotive and Hilliard, suggested to me that when I get these in my hands to bring them by, or at least snap some good pictures of them and send them off to him in the email, and he will get in touch with AMD, Auto Metal Direct, because he said they are fairly interested in new and upcoming oddball stuff, more or less. And, well, we meet that requirement. So, cross your fingers. I'm not promising anything right now, but there is at least still people working on floorboards for us in the background, including myself. So, I'm trying. I'm not ready to give up on it yet. All right, let's go check out a little bit of tech rod. All right, let me get you in here. I'm not exactly sure how much I have saved on my phone. I'm going to try and get a little bit more of this whole build uh, in a video, plus a couple other ones that I've done, because, man, there's been a lot of stuff happened to tech route since it's been here. But we'll gloss over this power steering. Got the pump sits right here. And as you can see, you can move the charcoal canister and keep it uh, the power steering lines I have to I'm having a struggle right now getting them past his exhaust because there's also a possibility of this engine moving in the future so I'm kind of trying to get them where they need to be or where they're supposed to be if I can get this to focus a little better uh, the brake system was done we redid a little bit of the fuel system uh, we could totally built a brand new alternator bracket for it. Uh, it now has an idler over here. So, a lot has happened. But as far as power steering goes, the Chevette lines came up to about here anyway. And as you can see, they, there's plenty, plenty here. I just need to make a, I need to get a female fitting on a hard line and then run it around and into that fitting right there. And then the return hose that is also going to come up through here will come up to about here. And then it gets a flared hard line inside of it with a clamp run over and into the return hose. Either be it here or I may just run it all the way up to where it returns in there. This is mounted on the three tabs and the rubber isolators pretty quiet um, as of right now the main ground is going to ground to the chassis right here the power wire runs over and it's going to run into his distribution block up here on the other side of this 80 amp fuse pretty sure it only needs a 60 amp fuse but some places on the internet are recommending running the 80 amp fuse rather than the 60 amp fuse so that's what we ended up doing uh, and then this is the on it just needs 12 volts when the key is on uh, there's a three second delay and then the pump starts there is apparently also a kit out now that allows you to plug into this and utilize the other two wires for speed control uh, gives you a little box uh, I would imagine that's the solid state module for speed control uh, and then they give you like a point -a meter kind of a volume control 
uh, that you put under the dash. And you can slow it down or speed it up depending on how much you want. Uh, so this actually worked out really well. And where it goes is way in front of where the tires are ever going to be. Right there beside the bumper bracket and in a completely dead area. So there's no intrusion into anything that you would have. They don't, it doesn't hit the horns. That actually works out really well and it's under the hood line. Well, well under the hood line, even for as high as that cap is. I know that there is also a different reservoir that had like a remote fill. So if you wanted one that was a little lower, there is one that is available with a little different thing setup. Or maybe some searching would probably find you another Ford Volvo tank that would fit this pump that might be a little more low profile. But as of right now, that, that seems to be fine. We got the wheel spacers out. Uh, which you'll see soon, uh, which got the wheels back up underneath of it so we could lower it back down a little bit. So the tech rod now rides really nice as well. Uh, I'm hoping to have the power steering done here in the next day. Of course, I keep saying that. It keeps getting pushed back, but it, we're almost done. There's also been an S10 wiper motor swapped in here because... The delay wipers that everybody likes, that's kind of an, an elusive option for the Chevettes. And this requires a couple wiring changes and an adapter plate underneath the motor for the most part. Uh, it's plug and play after that. You change the switch in the column and then you have delay wipers because the module on the S10 uh, setup is inside here. I'm going to go into a in-depth video on that before this car leaves because I uh, want to cover it once I have it finished. That way I have all the details worked out. So, that's more or less what's going on with that right now. Um, what I have discovered, though, is I'm not completely missing all of my footage, which is really good because you guys missed an entire build section on the Cheddar Express. Uh, I do have some really raw footage on my phone that was shot in between some things. Uh, I will be compiling into a video. I also have a bunch of stuff on Tech Rod that I'm going to be compiling into a video. And I'm going to have actually a small thing about the meat put together because... I have a little bit on my phone. I think I have enough for maybe a quickie 10, 15 minute video covering what we did with the meat. So there'll be probably three or four different videos getting dropped just because that's what I have on my phone. Uh, unfortunately, there's still a ton of information that I had. Um, there was a bunch of stuff on scooter that was done. Uh, that's all gone. You know, I don't have that. So, I'm going to do what I can to get some content to you guys over the next week. Uh, sometime, maybe even over the next couple days. But uh, for the time being, I guess, I will see you guys soon. In the meantime, keep that shiny side up.